done is it clear so those are the different elements that need to be done for a ischemic and hemorrhagic shock when you want to really the symptom by treating the mechanism of the disease now by using the principle of management <clears throat> Now, they said the next thing that you have to evaluate now is to treat the cause. Is it clear? Is to treat the cause. Now, similarly, I've said the cause can be divided into ischemic and can also be divided into hemorrhagic. Is it clear? So, those are the two elements of the cause. Now, in ischemic stroke, the cause can be atherosclerotic. Is it atherosclerotic? Now, after already ha having removed the, the the first part, so you have to when you want to when you have already stopped the 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 dying, you have treated the dying and the complication, you can treat the cause. So for atherosclerotic, is it clear to manage that atherosclerosis? Generally, after the atherosclerosis can occur at the level of coronary artery. So you have done the carotid Doppler and you have found that there is plaque at the level of the carotid Doppler. You need to do management with in intervention and that is surgery where you are going to do a carotid endarterectomy is it clear so you do carotid endarterectomy in order to to scrape out the plaques that are going to be located but now when you do carotid endarterectomy it can be a risk factor again for another stroke is it clear because it can dislodge the plaque now that is for atherosclerosis now the next one now where you have also another cause which can be cardio embolic is it clear so you need to find the reason why there is that embolus is it clear so when you want to treat cardio embolic you need to first give the patient anti uh, um, anticoagulants is it clear to prevent blood clot formation so you give anticoagulants like heparin warfarins is it clear and then you give other antithrombotics like anti platelets to prevent platelet aggregation is it clear so you give anti platelets so you give anticoagulants like heparin rivaroxaban i also give also even anti vitamin k depending on your choice and to prevent side effects and you also give anti platelets for cardioembolic to prevent the thrombus formation now since so cardioembolic is made up of two elements it's made up of first embolic which is thromboembolic where you give this anticoagulant and it's made up of cardio the word cardio comes here because there are certain etiologies that can be associated with this chemical particularly when you have an arrhythmia is it clear so you need to treat the arrhythmia of the patient by using an anti-arrhythmic medication is it clear if it is a tacky arrhythmia you're going to use a beta blocker and an anti-arrhythmic beta blocker is in such a way that the rate should be normalized but if the rate is already normalized then no reason you need to use a rate control medication rate control medication is only used when you have an abnormal rate but in this case if the patient does not have an abnormal rate don't use a rate control medication example of rate control medication you can have uh, beta blockers and you can have digoxin digitalis which are rate control medication digitalis are also positive iotropic medication is it clear now if the patient has also another problem anticoagulants also come in place order for anticoagulation if the patient has an arrhythm um, um, disorder is it clear an arrhythmia is it you now you need to give an, <coughs> an anti arrhythmic medication by using a pharmacologic uh, um, anti by, by using a pharmacologic cardioversion is it clear the anti arrhythmic medication are divided into three class you have class one to class four class one is a sodium ion channel blocker example you have flakenize you have didocaine class two is a beta blocker is it clear? class 2 is beta blocker example bisoprolol carvedilol class 3 is a potassium ion channel blocker example amiodarone and then class 4 is going to be a calcium ion channel blocker the the dihydropyridine calcium ion channel blocker example is verapamil is it clear? so those are the different elements that you need to evaluate in a patient that has um, a stroke is it clear? So you need to also give antiarrhythmic to treat for the, the cardiac disorders. Now, the next thing after giving the antiarrhythmics, so you need to give the antiarrhythmic after the treating. So for cardiac body, we have also for lacuna infarct. Lacuna infarct, we say that it is mostly due to a lipohyalinosis. 
Is it clear? A any medication that can result to lipoaldehydenosis. You have a problem with HIV or you can use anti or anti antiviral medication can result to a lipoaldehydenosis. Is it clear? So a particular antiviral may be stopped, and you also need to give medication that are going to reduce the triglyceride level of blood. Is it clear? So generally, those are the different elements. Now the next one now is for hemorrhagic. In hemorrhagic, the cause may be aneurysms. Is and when you have aneurysm, you need to do interventional methods. Interventional methods where you are going to do um, um, stripping, <coughs> aneurysmal stripping. Is it clear? You are going or you do aneurysmal nipping. Is it clear? Meaning that when you close the aneurysm, surgically or interventional radiology, is it clear? You need to close that aneurysm so that it should not rupture in another circumstance. Is it clear? Or if you have a atrovenous malformation surgery in order to, to nip or strip the, 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 the aneurysm. So we have um, so aneurysmal nipping in order to close the is it or coiling? You can have also other terms like coiling. Is it clear? So those are the different things that you need to do for hemorrhagic shock in order to treat the origin. Now the next element is to prevent the reoccurrence. So when you want to prevent the reoccurrence of shock, reoccurrence of shock, is it clear? Generally, you need to evaluate for the background of shock. Is it clear? So based on the risk factor that the patient had. Is it clear? And we said that the risk factor of shock, we have set multiple risk factors that I'm going to show you now. So these are the different risk factors. We said that for atherosclerotic shock, we have traditional and we have novel risk factor. For the traditional risk factor, you have modifiable, non-modifiable. Is it clear? Now under the modifiable, you need to know if the patient has hypertension, you need to do the hypertensive workup of the patient as investigation. And you also need to do what the 